I've had a lot of concussions, three I remember very distinctly. That's a great hit right there. You're going full tilt, full bore, make the contact, and it's just a, a pop. I landed on my head, and I was out. I couldn't figure out the entrance from the locker room onto the field, and I didn't remember the entire game after that hit. Reeves decked again by Leo Ezra, who's playing another strong... What was really scary is that you really don't know what the repercussions are going to be. In recent years, I've been a bit more concerned because I've experienced memory loss and headaches. We're ready for you. Come on, we'll go this way. Today, I'm going in to have some testing done. We're looking at the effects of multiple concussions on the brain, whether individuals develop a disease called tr chronic traumatic encephalopathy, which is a neurodegenerative disease, not unlike Alzheimer's. We're going to bring in over the next two years, 40 CFL former players, 20 of them with a lot of concussions and 20 of them with no concussions, kickers. And we'll also compare all 40 of those athletes to people who have never played football. We have the potential here, if we can understand what's going on, to dramatically improve recovery from brain injury. So when you see number three, try not to press anything. So we bring them in, they'll get a neuropsychological assessment, which looks at their thinking functions, like memory and attention. Draw them from memory, please. We also look at their hand strength and hand-eye coordination. The athletes are going to get state-of-the-art neuroimaging of their brain. They'll get some genetic testing, and they'll also get a clinical neurological exam. We're looking at traumatic brain injury in a completely different way by seeing it as not a discrete event from which someone recovers, but rather something that is progressive and degenerative. And we really critically need to understand this degeneration that ensues so that we can improve people's recovery. We want to be able to detect it early, and then we want to be able to treat it. And the other intervention is to is for thinking functions. We'll bring the athletes in a few weeks later and we'll provide them with the results of all of their assessments. And athletes who are symptomatic will receive interventions. They'll receive interventions for their mood and they'll receive interventions for their cognitive functioning. An example of that might be to spend a couple of hours every day doing challenging memory exercises, challenging mental calculations, even learning new language if that's something that they're interested in. The uniqueness of our project is that we can cover the spectrum and I'm not sure that there's any other uh, project uh, in the world that can do that, certainly not in Canada. We have all of the expertise to really make discoveries. The study has the potential to help anybody who's in a position of sustaining multiple concussions, whether they're in junior high school, high school, or in professional sports. In general, our research will certainly be appropriate and highly relevant for a whole bunch of people, those who are hurting themselves at work, those who are in motor vehicle crashes, uh, those who have falls rather innocently at home or on the street. There's a huge bubble out there of a lot of aging men and women uh, that have the same questions we do. This is a major public health problem in terms of the number of people that are affected and in terms of the cost of looking after those people. So at the end of the day, it's about uh, getting to the bottom of, of it, getting you know, an understanding of where, where I am cognitively. You know, if it is some, a, a real cognitive problem, what can we do about it? I mean, you know, so if, you know, get a baseline and an understanding uh, and some direction, not only for the diagnosis, for possible treatment.